Good morning. In this segment, I want to go over some basic anatomy and anatomical landmarks so the classes will be easier to follow. Let's start with the obvious. This is our head. This is our neck or cervical region. We have seven cervical vertebrae. Next is our chest where the ribs are located. This is our thoracic region. We have 12 thoracic vertebrae. Next is the low back or lumbar area. We have five lumbar vertebrae. And the spinal column ends in the pelvis, which, is, which are the hips. And even though that they refer to be one landmark, they consist of two, three bones, the two ilium and the sacrum in the back, which is a triangular shape bone. We next we have our thigh bone, which is our femur. And in our lower leg, we have the tibia and fibula. In the arm, we have the upper arm bone, which is the humerus. And the lower, lower arm bones are the radius and ulna. This is our scapula or shoulder blade. And then next, let's go over basic movements so they are easier to understand the classes. This is what flexion is for curling forward or bending forward. We can flex our head, we can flex our neck, we can flex the thoracic and the entire back. Lumbar flexion is this. We can also flex our arms. This is forward flexion. And our legs, flexion, but this is also flexion. We can also extend or curl back or lift up, depends what angle you're working out. So this is capital extension, cervical extension, thoracic extension, and lumbar extension. This is also extension, extending your arms, bringing your arms behind you. In the leg two, this is extending your leg in the foot, this is dorsiflexion or flexion, when you're bringing your toes closer to your nose, and plantar flexion, which is pointing away, pointing your foot. And we also have flexion of the arm or bending your arm, straightening the arm, which is extending your arms. We also have rotation or turning, capital rotation, which is when you just only turn your head, cervical rotation when you also turn your neck, thoracic rotation when you bring your chest, when you turn your chest and the entire spinal column can also rotate to both sides. And then we have lateral flexion or side bending which is this movement. Um, we have abduction, or lifting your arms out to the side, in your arms and in your legs, done with your abductor muscles. And then adduction is when you bring your arms closer to the midline, same thing in your legs using your inner thigh or adductor muscles. And then we also have external rotation or turning out and internal rotation or turning in, both in your arms and in your legs. External rotate, turn out, internal rotate, turn in. And then lastly, let's go into the pelvic tilt. So the spine usually has, naturally has a natural curve. So there's some sort of space under the lumbar area. And usually our thoracic is a usually flexed forward, naturally, slightly. If someone has a huge 
forward curve, that's what it's called a humpback or kyphosis. In the neck too, we have some sort of slight extension. Um, and in the pelvis, if someone has a large curve, that's called lordosis. This is what the big mouse house is. And posterior tilt is, imagine that the pelvis is a bowl. So naturally, there's a bowl filled with water. Naturally, the water would stay in that bowl or bucket. If someone has an anterior tilt or forward tilt, that means that the bowl would be tilted forward and the water in the front would spill out. Someone with a posterior tilt, he would have this curve in the lumbar area would disappear and the water in the back end would spill out. I think that's it. That's very basic. And I also, we have skeletons at work. So I will film a segment and explaining this for a better visual cue. Thank you.